This is a patient with pseudoexfoliation syndrome and a dislocated lens capsular bag complex that is uh, floating in the vitreous. Uh, the patient has been referred for um, refixation of the lens. Uh, here I've made two paracentesis and injected dispersive viscoelastic into the anterior chamber to protect the cornea. Uh, I'm placing pars plana trocars, three and a half millimeters posterior to the limbus. And uh, I haven't yet decided if I'm going to try to lasso this lens or replace it yet, uh, depending on what I find when I start doing the vitrectomy. So here I've uh, started my uh, pars plane of vitrectomy using the biome illumination system. And I can see that the lens is now freely sitting on the retina without any support uh, from the zonules at all. So I've made a decision that I'm going to uh, do a complete vitrectomy remove this lens capsular bag complex and replace it with a uh, scleral fixated um, intraocular lens. So after completing the vitrectomy, uh, I'm going to need two hands to do the uh, maneuvering. So I'm going to use a chandelier light, uh, which means adding another uh, trocar for this uh, chandelier light. I'll now pre-place my uh, clear cornea incision with a 2.75 millimeter keratome. And, of course, that needs to be uh, self-sealing. Uh, now, using uh, an extrusion cannula set up to vacuum, I'm going to pick the lens up off the retina uh, with some vacuum. And using my second hand, I'm going to grab the haptic with a uh, micro forceps through the pars plana trocar. I'm bringing the lens up, and my assistant will take the biome out of the way and while I'm holding the uh, haptic with my right hand using the maxi grip forceps through the pars plana trocar, I'm now going to enter through the paracentesis with an MST micro holder and hand that haptic to my left hand uh, so that I can secure it. Uh, bear in mind that the view that you saw through the biome system in the uh, video is reversed, so I was using the opposite hands of what it appeared. So here I'm now going to hand the uh, haptic to my right hand using the maxi grip forceps placed through the uh, clear cornea incision I pre-placed. And I'm going to pull the haptic out of the eye. So now I've really got the implant secured. Now I'm going to go through the pars plana with a cyclodialysis spatula and push the lens up uh, through the uh, pupil. Uh, which doesn't really dilate that well as this patient has pseudoexfoliation. Now bear in mind that there's dispersive viscoelastic in the anterior chamber to protect the cornea endothelium here. Uh, once the lens is securely in the anterior chamber, I'm going to cut it uh, about 90% of the way through. And uh, Keep in mind that the lens is within the capsule or bag here, so it's a bit slippery. Um, so I'm going to cut the lens about 90% of the way through and uh, then when I pull this half of the lens out through the clear cornea incision, the other half will follow it and I don't have to worry about that dropping into the back of the eye. So you'll see this half come out and drag the second half with it. And now the uh, capsule bag with the summerings ring is uh, left behind. So I'll just burp that out of the eye and uh, using the infusion line. Uh, and then after I've uh, removed that, I'm going to put the biome system back in place. And uh, with the light pipe, uh, just make sure that I've really completed the vitrectomy and not left any fragments or uh, debris behind. Um, and uh, the vitrectomy is now completed. Uh, There's really thorough vitrectomy. I can go to about the business of putting the uh, new lens in. So this is an Aaron EC3 PAL three-piece lens I'm injecting in. Uh, with a uh, shooter uh, into the anterior chamber. Um, the lens is unfolding, and now I'm going to use a 30 gauge TSK needle, about 1.5 to 2 millimeters postage to the limbus. Uh, enter at an angle uh, that mimics the curvature of the haptic. Uh, I'm going to grab the haptic with a 25 gauge MST micro forceps and feed it into the lumen of the uh, 30 gauge needle. Once this is in, uh, it'll be held in place by friction. Uh, I'm now going to place a second 30 gauge needle uh, exactly 180 degrees away. And it's very important 
that these are exactly 180 degrees away. And I'm now going to uh, grab the second haptic with the same uh, 25 gauge forceps. Uh, and I push the optic away a little bit with the needle uh, so I can get it at the right point at the uh, curve of the haptic. So I have good control and I can put this into the lumen of the second 30 gauge needle uh, exactly 180 degrees away. Now with both haptics docked into the 30 gauge needles, I'm going to grab the first uh, hap uh, needle and pull uh, both uh, haptics out of the eye uh, at the same time, which will rotate the lens into position. Uh, now before I let go of the second haptic in my right hand, I'm going to grab the first haptic in my left hand using the forceps to secure it. And now I can uh, pull the uh, second haptic uh, out of the needle and both haptics are on the outside of the eye. Uh, we'll now use a, uh, a cautery to uh, melt the tip of the haptic into a little uh, mushroom. Uh, and again, you don't have to uh, melt this uh, into too big of a, a mushroom, uh, otherwise it won't um, slip into the tunnel well. Uh, you would just want to make it big enough so that it uh, prevents uh, the haptic from uh, falling back into the eye. Um, so here we made a little mushroom at the tip, and I'm now going to push the haptic uh, into the uh, scleral tunnel that I made with the needle, uh, monitoring the position of the lens as I do this. Uh, if the lens did not center perfectly, you could recenter it by cutting the haptic a little shorter on one side and remelting it. Uh, the lens here is pretty nicely centered. Um, so now I'm going to make a little peripheral iridotomy with the uh, vitrector to prevent reverse pupillary block. Uh, I'll remove my trocars uh, and the uh, case is completed. I saw the patient a few hours later in the office and she looked like this at the slit lamp. Her vision was 2050 uncorrected and the um, cornea was nice and clear with a very well-scented lens. Thank you for your attention.